If you've ever given in to the temptation of a brownie-filled scoop of Ben & Jerry's ice cream, there's a good chance the brownies were baked here, in Yonkers, New York. It's the last place that Anthony Norwood thought he'd be working when he left prison. My criminal history was crazy. Uh, I went to prison at 24 years old. I got out of prison, I was 41 years old. Like so many people who come out of the criminal justice system, Norwood struggled to find a job after serving his time. But with nothing coming out of prison, you, you, you feel ashamed. You know, you, you can't go nowhere. Norwood put his name on the wait list for a job at Grayston Bakery. I said, they don't care about your background. I couldn't believe it. Like, they don't ask you anything. Grayston has what's called an open hiring policy. There are no background checks here, no experience necessary. The only requirement is the willingness to work. Is it's not rolling pins and, and top hats, right? This is hard work. These team members are on their feet for 10, 12 hours a day, mixing 400 pound bowls of brownie batter. In today's episode, we delve into what an open hiring policy looks like and how this commercial bakery has made its employees' lives sweeter. After two decades behind bars, Anthony Norwood knew the cards were stacked against him. Some guys that get out of prison, they go back within 30 days, six months, a year, filling out all the job applications. I was scared to put down my criminal history. I just wanted a job. Every year, about 620,000 people are released from prison. Studies have shown that former inmates are less likely to reoffend if they can find a job, and nearly half of them earn less than $500 the first year they're free. It pains me to think that people that might want to gain access to the workforce never get a chance. Grayston has put its open hiring policy into practice since its founding in 1982. The idea is simple. Anyone who wants a job can apply. They put their name on a list. When we have a job available, we take the first name off the list and give them an opportunity. New employees start with an apprenticeship, but only 40% continue full-time. And what we do is we sit people down in a room and say, this is what you need to do to be successful on the job. You can imagine when you give someone an opportunity, no questions asked, that people come with all sorts of things. The bakery employs nearly 100 people who help crank out 35,000 pounds of brownies every day. They're expected to deliver on the floor as soon as we put them down there. People really need to be committed to it. But this bakery isn't geared exclusively towards former inmates. Grayston also caters to immigrants, seniors, and anyone who faces employment barriers. I look for employment for day, night, anything. I, I just, I heard so many no's. I was told no for McDonald's, you know? <laughs> it's, it's depressing. Swanson, a mother of five, was willing to do anything. Um, my next step was actually breaking my family apart because if I can't provide for my family, then I can't keep them together. Grayston says they have helped almost 20,000 families since it was founded. Open hiring isn't just about helping people. It's good for the company's bottom line. Our hiring costs are zero. The industry averages about $4,500 to bring someone in and get them onboarded. For us, we invest back into our team members. Grayston's assistance programs include childcare, housing, financial literacy, immigration services, and access to healthy food. And it's all about helping people change their life for the better. That's what I love about it, because it, it changed me. I'm a pure example of it. <laughs> the beauty of open hiring is we think every business can do it. In 2018, Grayston launched a program to help other companies develop similar policies. We're anxious and enthusiastic about finding thousands, maybe millions of jobs for the people that are on the sidelines of the economy right now and trying to inspire those business leaders to move forward with just one job. I have my dignity. I, I feel like I can do anything now. When I look and see what I've been through in life and where I'm at now, I'm, I'm not rich, but I'm okay and I'm, I'm proud of me. We are joined today by Matthew McCarthy, the CEO of Ben & Jerry's. Thank you so much for coming by. Thanks very much. So your company just released a brand new flavor, Justice Remix, and we're gonna get into the flavor in just a second, but why get into social justice issues at all 
as an ice cream brand. That baked into our values uh, and social justice in particular has been something we've been focused on for the better part of the Ford uh, decades around. So uh, uh, contrary to what some people might say that well, you know, why do you do this? Is it bad for business? It's actually essential for our business. Now let's break down Justice Remix because there are a lot of meanings behind even something as simple as the flavors. What are the ingredients in this new flavor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is a this is a chocolate and a cinnamon ice cream, and it has chunks of brownies that are also a little spicy. It's okay. a fantastic flavor. We've been uh, sourcing brownies from uh, our partner Grayston Bakeries for uh, over 30 years, and this is an example of a program that we call values-led sourcing, where we we say. Making the ice cream isn't enough. We want to look at all the ingredients that we bring into the ice cream and say, how can we actually build some social impact into our ingredients? And I think that the folks at Grayston Bakeries are probably one of the best examples out there. And creating a flavor is one of the ways that we draw attention to the issue. In this case, how broken the U.S. criminal justice system is. The United States has about 5% of the world's population, but about 25% of the world's incarcerated population. We put more people in jail, and we're not any safer because of it. This campaign, this flavor, and this effort with the Advancement Project gives us an opportunity to shine as big a light as possible on these issues. Obviously, Ben & Jerry's is part of a larger corporation, mm -hmm. Unilever. How do you balance that with what's going on and then staying in line to your company's core values and missions? Actually, putting your values out there is not only good for business, it's one of the best ways to show the people in your company and prospective talent out there what you stand for. And what we find is that people come to Ben & Jerry's because they want to be something bigger than just selling ice cream. So speaking of that, where do the proceeds of the sales of this ice cream go? So portion of these proceeds are going directly to the Advancement Project uh, and to some of the grassroots organizations that we, that we work with. And that's normal for all of these flavors. So we carve off a piece of the profits for these things and we put them back in the hands of the people that are doing the work uh, in the communities. We're putting our consumers in control where they can choose the product because they want to be part of something, not just because Ben & Jerry's thinks it's a good idea.